So if you have played any Souls game, I'm sure you're familiar with the Great Sword weapon class. And personally, I consider Great Swords to be old reliable. You really can't go wrong with using one. And in Elden Ring, there are a total of 21 Great Swords, and I'm going to try them all out. We're going to see the best, the worst, and even the most underrated weapons that the Great Sword class has to offer. But before we get into any of that, let's get to the round table. All right, first things first, the Bastard Sword. I'm gonna go with a Heavy Bastard Sword, has an A scaling and strength, and I'm gonna try out Stamp Upward Cut. I've never used a Stamp Ash of War before, and I figured it'd just be nice to start off with something basic. Ooh, we got a Banish Knight. All right, what's good? Oh, you got dual wield Banish Knight Swords. Nice. Oh, oh. Okay, there's quite a bit of recovery on that. I gotta be careful. So now as for the bastard sword it just uses the basic light attack string there is another light attack string that we'll look at that is common among a couple different great swords but this light attack string here is the one that you're going to see most and then there are some great swords that have like unique heavy attacks and stuff beer banish knight <laughs> hey, good fight, brother. I like the cosplay. I can always respect a Banish Knight cosplay. Personally, of all the cosplays that I've done in this game, that's that's one of my favorites. But yeah, that's the Bastard Sword right there. I'll go ahead and show you like the backstep attack, you know, the rolling attack. And I have no complaints at all about this weapon specifically. You know, the damage was nice. The attack speed is good. The range isn't bad either. The next one I'm doing is the Iron Great Sword. Got Fire Affinity and Flaming Strike. And listen, Flaming Strike, I'll tell you, has been, and I think always will be, one of the best PvP Ashes of War, without a doubt, especially in duels. You get the Lingering Hitbox, it does good damage. You have a follow-up attack. You get a Fire Buff on your weapon. Wait, I just realized I still have the Talismans on from my Guard Counter video. Clean Rot set, please. Wait, 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 do you want the clean rot set? All right, there you go, boss. There's your clean rot night set. I hope you enjoy. God, this looks so goofy. <laughs> hey, hey, I'll rock the helmet for this fight, though. Ooh. Oh. Gotta remember about the follow-up. Ooh! Little bit of lag there. But God, dude, Flaming Strike. So clean, man. So, so clean. But yeah, there you go. Iron Greatsword, exact same moveset as the Bastard Sword. Just pretty basic. But next, I have the Lord Sworn's Cold Great Sword with Chilling Mist. You have C's across the board for your scaling, 127 frost buildup, and the moveset is the exact same as the last two Great Swords. God, I'm excited to get to these more unique Great Swords though, because that's when stuff gets really, really spicy. Another frost proc, we like that. Hey, good fight, Yorda. Oh, up next, I have a Banish Knight's Heavy Great Sword with Stormblade on it. It has a B scaling and strength. You know, if you're a higher level than 125, you could maybe do like a quality build with it because it has B scaling in both strength and dex whenever you put on quality. But as of right now, this character is full strength. So, uh, Korath. Hello? Oh, and also, this is the first great sword that I'm using so far that has the second move set. You know, you kind of flip the sword at the end of your attacks. Hey, 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 dude, I'm showing something. I'm showing something. Chill. You know, heavy attack is still basically the same as the other ones. But I personally just really like this moveset because of how smooth it is. <laughs> uh, 
hey, hey, good fight, man. <laughs> And the Banished Knight Sword just has a special place in my heart just because of the look of it, you know, of the sword itself and the sheath. Just so well designed. Okay, next we have the Gargoyle's Heavy Greatsword. The Gargoyle weapons are 1000% meant to be used in strength builds. They just always have very, very solid strength scaling. And I do have Troll's Roar on this sword, which is just a very, very fun Ash of War. Ow. Oh, that is a meaty follow-up. Jesus. Uh, I, I, considering the knockback from the Ash of War... But no, considering the knockback from the Ash of War, I don't really know how often you're going to hit this follow-up heavy. But I mean, it does look sick, though. Moving on, though, we have the Claymore, a.k.a. the Baymore, a.k.a. Old Reliable. If you have played Souls games, you know about the Claymore. It is just such a spectacular weapon, especially in Elden Ring. And uh, I'll show you why. So what makes the Claymore so special isn't the light attack string. The light attack string is very, very basic. But no, the thing about the Claymore is the crouching attack or rolling attack. As you can see, it's a poke. And we all know pokes are very, very strong in this game. But that isn't all. There's more pokes on this weapon. The heavy attacks. Amazing for roll catching. You're going to get fat damage out of them. Plenty of people have done it to me as I've done it to other people where you roll or crouch, get a poke, and then charge up a heavy for another poke. You can just get roll catches for days. It's so, so good. And I'm pretty sure these poke attacks actually work with the thrusting talisman. Obviously, the heavy attacks will work with the axe talisman. Ow. Here, let's see if we can hit a heavy here. Ooh, stopped him in his tracks too. And remember, guys, we still have the enchanted greatswords to get to. <laughs> oh, oh. 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 <laughs> I really just wanted to hit the heavy. Hey, good fight, coach. But yeah, guys, that's the Claymore. Uh, seriously, I, th I think it is the best great sword all around. You can put Ashes of War on it. It has solid scaling pretty much across the board. Whatever build you want to run, the Claymore can work. Next up, I have a Knight's Blood great sword with Bloody Slash. You guys may be familiar with the Knight's great sword. I don't know if this is still the case, so don't quote me on it. But at one point, I know this weapon did have true combos and people were just running around with it doing like 1200 damage in two hits, like insta procking people. It's pretty ridiculous. I never got that good with it. Frankly, I hardly have ever touched this weapon. Oh, and also this great sword specifically has moveset two. Where you kind of flip the sword around just like the Banished Knight great sword. <laughs> Are you going to do anything with those dual lances, bro? Like, what's going on? <laughs> hey, good fight, brother. I'm not really sure what your game plan was. I mean, you had the longest poke weapons in the game and just like ran away from me. But hey, GG. Just imagine if the Claymore had this weapon's light attack string. It would be the sauciest weapon in the game. Okay, now we have two more normal great swords. One of those two is the Forked Greatsword. I used this in a video not too long ago, 
It's great for poison builds. It's great for occult builds. It has innate bleed. I'm gonna go ahead and rock poison for this one, throw on poisonous mist. And I tell you what, man, poison builds are just so underrated. I mean, I, I understand that a lot of duelists especially carry around boluses, but hey, you catch somebody who doesn't have boluses on them, poison builds are insane. And I mean, on top of that, if you know somebody has boluses and they're gonna try to eat them very, very frequently, you can use that as an opportunity to punish them. Hello, smiley face. Watch out! <laughs> oh my god, he's already poisoned. Oh god. Oh, wait, that was still in range. And there really isn't anything unique about this greatsword. I mean, maybe besides how it looks. You know, it's it's a cool looking weapon, but as a matter of fact, uh, the hitbox is no different on this weapon, even with the split blade at the end, which is kind of disappointing. You know, I, I think that would have been a cool little unique thing. Nothing really special about it, besides the fact that it has innate bleed. And speaking of innate bleed, next we have the flamberge, or however you pronounce it. I think that's how you pronounce it. I remember whenever I did my Jaren build, people were roasting me for pronouncing it wrong. Okay, even though this has innate bleed and it is good for occult builds and, and bleed builds and stuff like that, I'm just gonna roll with Keen because with Keen, it does have a scaling and dex. And I think I'm gonna roll with Piercing Fang. And just like the Forked Greatsword, this weapon doesn't really have anything else going for it besides the innate bleed. <laughs> oh, they were not expecting to parry that at all. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, good fight. And yeah, that's it for the normal non-enchanted greatswords. Real quick, go ahead and comment down below what your favorite normal greatsword is. If I had to choose one, I feel like I can't pick any other greatsword other than the Claymore. But now it is time for the fun stuff. And by fun stuff, I am of course talking about the enchanted greatswords. These are greatswords that have unique ashes of war that you cannot change. And the first one that I'm going to be starting out with is the Gargoyle's Black Blade. And personally, I think this is the most underrated greatsword in the game. For the moveset, there's nothing really unique about it. It's just the basic greatsword moveset. However, the Ash of War Corpse Wax Cutter Except it has the death flame effect where it's going to shred your opponent's health after you hit them with it. Hey, hey, it's the Dung Eater. What's up? Hey. You ready to get shredded, boy? Good fight, Dung Eater. And I'm just now realizing that the Greatsword weapon class is seriously stacked with faith weapons. I think that's pretty dope, honestly. And speaking of pretty dope, up next we have Ordovus' Greatsword. As for the moveset, uh, again, nothing unique about it. Just the basic, bare bones Greatsword moveset. But the Ash of War, Ordovus' Vortex, is actually a chargeable Ash of War. Here is Uncharged. And then here is Charged. If you manage to hit the charged version of this thing and you have the right talismans, it hits like an absolute truck. Hello, test. What up? Ooh, uncharged did 885 that's that's not bad at all dude that is some very solid damage for an uncharged ash of war hey good fight test 
Okay, we only managed to hit the uncharged version there. Uh, I think I got to go into another fight and land the fully charged version. Are you going to allow me to hit you with this full weapon art, please? <laughs> okay, 1100 damage. Hey, not bad. And I don't even know if all the hits landed there. Not totally sure. Oh, that, that still, that, that, that still hit me. All right, next we have the inseparable sword. And as far as the unique great swords go, I'd say this one is the least unique because the Ash Award that it has is Sacred Blade. And obviously that is a normal Ash Award that you can just use on weapons. Oh, and as for the moveset on it, it does have the same moveset as the Knight's Great Sword and the Banished Knight Sword. However, the heavy attacks and like the back step attack and the crouch attack and stuff are all still just the basic ones. Ooh, rot Rotted Duelist, I like it. But no, Sacred Blade is just a very, very solid Ash of War. And as you can see, after you use Sacred Blade, you get a holy buff on your weapon. Hey, good fight, fake Zun. Next up, I have the Blasphemous Blade. Uh, I'm sure you guys are familiar. The Ash of War Taker's Flames is just a giant lava plume. Super, super sick. Really, really strong, especially in multi-combat. Even if you don't necessarily hit the Ash of War, as long as it grazes your opponent or like goes through them as they roll through it, you're still gonna get life steal from it, which makes this sword insanely strong. Dark Souls 3. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so I don't know if you heard that little sound cue, but I, I did get some lifesteal back. Okay, well, we didn't hit the Ash of War there, but great swords are just simply too good. Okay, close to 1400 damage off one weapon art. And yeah, there you go. If I had any health missing, I would get a portion of my health back from that. Oh. Ow. Oh my god. I hate carrion slicer so much. Oh. 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 Oh my god. Okay, but I mean, yeah, there you go. That's what it looks like whenever you hit the Ash of War. It's truly amazing. It is definitely a top tier weapon. If you want a good faith weapon, just use the Blasphemous Blade. All right, but up next, I got the Golden Order Great Sword. You guys might recognize this from my unique faith build video that I did a couple months back. As for the moveset itself, you know, there's nothing special about it. Pretty much the same as every other Great Sword. But the really cool part is the weapon art establish order. Here is the first stage, and then the second. That massive projectile, I will have you know, is absurd in multi-combat. Like if you manage to get into like a 3v3, or you know, maybe even go into an invasion, that projectile can hit like every single enemy if they are relatively close to each other. It is absolutely ridiculous. In duels, however, not as good. It's it's decently easy to dodge, but hey, we're just gonna go for it regardless. See if we can hit it. Who we got? Lucky one, hello. Oh, okay. Oh, hey, we hit both parts. I think that was a total of like 1100 damage. Man, he is just trying to mash that R1 button. But I mean, I mean, of course, that's what uh, straight swords are good for. Good fight. And for the last of the faith-oriented great swords, we have the Sacred Relic Sword. You probably saw a lot of people using this weapon. 
because of the weapon art waves of gold or people like to call it waves of piss is so horribly annoying in multi-combat whenever coliseums came out you probably saw this spammed a lot i mean just look at that damn it <laughs> okay hey we hit it there uh the damage wasn't too crazy but again in multi-combat it's very, very nuts. Good fight. But yeah, basically in 3v3s, you literally just send the weapon art across the arena and you just hit everybody that isn't paying attention to you. All right, we got to keep him going though. Next up, the Sword of Milos, AKA the Doo Doo Blade. This is the Dung Eater's weapon. As you can see, has C scaling and strength, C and dex. The moveset actually does have some unique attacks. The light attack string is just normal, but the heavy attacks are the cool part. Get that run up, and then that second swipe. And then the really, really interesting part about it is Shriek of Milos, the weapon art. So here it is. After you use it, you get buffed heavy attacks. Kind of hilarious but also people that are within the radius of the roar get a 15 percent debuff to all damage resistances but it's only five percent in pvp and it lasts 40 seconds it also increases your physical damage by 7.5 percent for the duration and slightly improves strength scaling by plus five who we got etv dilby wait I, did we fight earlier? I think we did. Okay, we got the debuff on him. <laughs> Wait, that damage is so pitiful. Oh my god. I guess I'd have to hit the full heavy attack string for it to really do anything. Come here. What? Yeah. Oh, oh, dude, so close. Bro, if we would have hit that last heavy attack, I think it would have been a tie. Hey, but GG's, man. But yeah, that is the Sword of Milos. Personally, I dislike the weapon. I don't think it's good. And I just think in the Great Sword weapon class, there are much better options. And speaking of better options, up next we have the Moraeus Executioner's Sword, which I I'm kind of on the fence, but it might just be my favorite greatsword in the game next to the Claymore. As for the moveset, nothing is unique about it except for the heavy attacks. Get two overhead slams like that. Pretty cool. And then there is the weapon art, which is the Dancing Blade weapon art. And if you fought Elamur or the Briar, you've basically seen this weapon art before. It is chargeable, and also you can roll out of the drill part before the slash. It used to not be like that, but they made that change pretty early in this game's lifespan, and I tell you what, it was much needed. All right, let's see. James Adeen. Ooh, hold on. <laughs> oh my god, if I would have landed the slash, that would have been a one-shot. But just the first part of that did 1,800 damage. 1,800. Good fight, James. Honestly, just hitting that right there, I think solidified this as my favorite great sword. Just from a design standpoint, has one of the coolest weapon arts in the game. It's kind of an edgy sword and, you know, I'm an edge lord, so. But okay, we have four more great swords left. We have the Alabaster Lord Sword, Death's Poker, Health and Steeple, and the Dark Moon Great Sword. And the first one I'm going to touch on is the Helpin Steeple. Wait, does this weapon have any unique attacks? I don't believe it does. Yeah, that looks pretty basic. Heavy attacks are basic. Back stuff is basic. Okay, yeah. So no unique attacks on here. And as for the weapon art, it is called Ruinous Ghost Flame, which I think you can hit people with it, but mainly it is just a weapon buff. Makes your weapon look very, very badass. And the weapon buff adds 110 magic damage and 80 frostbite buildup to attacks. 
He also used to be way worse, by the way. It got a series of buffs over the course of time. Two hits already uh, frostbitten. Come on, Sierra, what you got? Oh, imagine if I would have hit him with that. Yeah, that's what I thought, boy. Good fight. And now, of course, we got to move on to a fan favorite, the Dark Moon Greatsword. It's gone by different names, but it has been in pretty much every single Souls game. The light attack string is basic. You know, rolling attack, crouching attack, all that. But whenever you use the weapon art, it's called Moonlight Greatsword. You buff your weapon, and then your heavy attacks will shoot projectiles. And you can just switch up the timings with this weapon so easily and just get roll catches for days. It is very, very versatile. You're going to see a lot of like hybrid mages running this weapon. The only issue with this weapon is once the buff runs out, you know, obviously you're not going to have the enhanced heavy attacks. And if you try buffing it again mid fight, you're going to get punished for it. Who we got? Star Caller Celis. What's good? How you doing? There we go. Good fight. But yeah, as you can see there, you know, the projectile by itself does really, really solid damage. You can hit the projectile and the blade if people are close enough to you. And of course you have the frostbite on top of that. It is just such a good weapon. All right, our second to last great sword of this video is the Alabaster Lord Sword. Got that B scaling and strength, D and int and D and dex. And the moveset is just the basic greatsword moveset. There are really no unique attacks. And this is also the shortest greatsword. So I feel like the range could maybe be an issue here and there. Yes, I am misfortune. Okay, hello? Nice. That was like max range. Not a lot of damage there though. Come on, what are you gonna do, bro? <laughs> hey, good fight. So yeah, nothing too crazy. I mean, the sword does look really dope. But, you know, the range is kind of poor. The physical damage isn't bad, but, you know, even the weapon art is just kind of eh. It's, it's basically just gravitas, except it has just a bit more range. But all right, last but certainly not least, we have the Death's Poker. It scales best in Dex. It also scales all right in Strength, and it has some Int scaling as well. you got some Frost buildup. As for the moveset, it's very, very basic. However, it actually shares the same heavy attacks as the Sword of Milos. So you get that run up, and then you get that swipe. Now, the coolest part about this weapon is the weapon art Ghost Flame Ignition. Here's the first part of it. But as you do that, you also have a light attack option or a heavy attack option as a follow-up. Here is the light attack. So you will leave a Ghost Flame Trail that can proc Frost. And then the heavy attack version is that explosion. Just such a cool weapon art. I really like weapon arts that have a light attack option and a heavy attack option. Not you, Moonvale. Joker. <laughs> hey, all right. I like it, dude. Let's go. Oh. Oh, 
Hit him with the nice little combo there with the weapon art. Around 800 damage, also proc frost. He has the bolluses though. Okay, I got I gotta hit this run up heavy attack though. Ooh, the hyper armor too, bro. That is actually nice. Good fight, Joker. I love your build. But yeah, that is it for the great swords. Uh, I think the worst great sword overall is probably the forked great sword. You know, I, I've used it quite a bit and I, I just don't really see anything redeemable about it. Like, you know, the alabaster sword, for example, it has solid physical damage. It still has a decent weapon art, even though I wish it was a bit more unique. Even with the innate bleed on the forked great sword, I feel like it's just still not great like there's really not a huge reason to use it especially when the flamberge is a thing i mean as for the best it, it's got to be between the blasphemous blade and the claymore both of those weapons are absolutely disgusting and i think the most underrated still to this day is the gargoyles black blade but even then i don't know the great sword weapon class is chock full of amazing weapons they have seen a plethora of buffs you really can't go wrong. Whatever you use, I'm sure you're gonna see some success. Feel free to comment your favorite or least favorite greatsword down below. If you enjoyed the video, smash that like. And as always, if you wanna become a fellow monker, all you gotta do is press that subscribe and that noti bell. I promise you will not regret it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all your recent support. Just stay safe out there and I will see you in the next one.